the day as God will help us, um, we just move. Um, this evening, I, I just want to just want to trust God to um, I actually want to speak about um, something around the miraculous. Um, maybe I'll title it Fit for the Miraculous or Walking in the Miraculous. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I, I don't know, I think I, I find legitimacy to talk about this from Sunday's message, um, Thinking Big. Was that part two or part three? You know, part three, yes. You know, um, about it, you know, so somewhere it gives me that um, courage. Actually, it's, it's something that, um, you know, what I'll be sharing tonight is, um, I, I pray God to help me, you know, in the way that I, I thought I would be able to bring, bring it forth. You know, it's something that in my little journey with God, I, I, it's from experience, you know, um, in, in my little work with God, you know, the things that God has taught me over time, you know, and um, fortunately, uh, being in a, such a community like this and how God has used the community to um, the blessing in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the community to, you know, move me further, you know, and I, I'm just going to be speaking from, from that point. Um, this year, by the grace of God, has been awesome. I don't know if you, if you feel that way. I don't know anyone. I'm, I'm talking about in terms of the spiritual and how much God has advanced us. I have had tremendous experiences. I'm not, I won't stand here and just begin to say over the air or just exaggerate things. You know, um, was it, I think maybe 2000 and, either 2014 or 2013, I had such, it was a year of, for me, it was back-to-back -back spiritual encounter. You know, and after that year, everything just looked dry. Uh, yeah, you still be following God and trusting God for, you know, but I just, in my heart, 2014, 15, 16, even 17, I'm like, God, take me back to that day. You know, when, if, when people say that my, uh, you know, sometimes pastor will say that it, our prayer should not be that, our best days should not be behind us, you know. And each time this pastor say that, I just, it takes me back to that experience, Lord, when I want to come back to those days. I want to come back to those days where you, I, you know, you can walk with God and you know that, yeah, I am in the center of God. We, there is an assurance in your heart and you know that. You know, so I always desired, you know, that time. I, I, and I, I, by the grace of God, this year, I think it was a higher measure for me. You know, it was a higher measure beyond that, you know. And, um... God has been teaching me a lot of things, and as we follow God, actually, um, uh, so sometimes I, the knowledge I used to have is whenever I am called upon to speak like this, I always find it very easy to just speak from what God is talking to me at that moment. You know, that's usually my, you know, but I, I, I think I'm beginning to learn it differently in terms of you know, sometimes it's not the time for you to share such thing. You know, you just have to still wait on God on it and all that. You know, but, you know, but I just found the liberty, you know, from that Sunday's message, you know, to talk about faith for the miraculous. Tonight, by the grace of God, we are going to just going to be zeroing in on the miracles of Jesus Christ. You know, um, how, how, um, and I like to define what miracle is. Praise the Lord. I, Pastor, the Hebrew, is he Hebrew word? Or is, is uh, Simeon. Hallelujah. I'm getting there. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. It actually means an unusual occurrence transcending the common course of nature. An unusual occurrence transcending the usual course of nature. It also means a wonder by which God authenticates men sent by him. Um, 
you know, that definition, when you take that, one of the things it, it says that the common cause of nature. And now, the fall of man brought man to the point where even though as believers, we are still subject to what everybody is subjected to. You know, but miraculous occurrences defy, um, defy natural cause. You know, and and it, it defies uh, it, it defies. You know, somebody. There is a way that nature has planned things to run. You know, and if you live as a human being. You are subjected, for example, you get to a point where your body begins to age. Do you understand? Because you are subject to, to is, is, a, is, a, is a consequence of the fall, to nature. Do you understand? And it's normal and it's natural for a woman, when she's in labor, to have pain. Do you understand? That is, that is, that is natural. You know, but mind you, what we call natural is not God's design. Praise God. It's not God's original design. It's, it's, we have accepted it. You know, acceptance is because the reason why we have accepted this is because we are in that state. Praise God. We are in that state of, of we are, where Bible says that we, um, all creation are subjected to, you know, subjected, uh, God has subjected them in everything in hope. Praise God. You know, so because of that, we, 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 is, it becomes a norm. It has happened to, it has happened to brother this. It has happened to, that's how it happened to sister this. That's how it happens to everybody. So there is this acceptance. Now, that is our limitation to work in the miraculous. Praise God. That acceptance of the fact that if it has happened to that person, I am not different. Are we not all human beings? Do you understand? You know, if they can sack, um, brother, this that is very intelligent, and they sack that one that has a first class, why can't they sack me that I just made the 2-1 or a 2-2? Do you understand? So, you see, that, that, that orientation makes us to resign. And when we resign, we cannot experience the miraculous. Amen. You know, so, the, the, the realm of the spirit, you know, some time ago when I, um, when I had an opportunity, I, I, one of the things I, I mentioned that day was that the, the realm of the spirit is a realm that responds to, is, is, is a realm of order. The realm of the spirit is not demons know when you are standing in faith. So that's order. So if you cast him out, he cannot say, I will not leave. Praise God. You know, in, so the realm of the spirit, God is the umpire of that realm. You know, but, you know, if... If you, if, you, if you break the edge, Satan knows that you are breaking the edge so he can come. That's, that's still order. You know, but that realm, we seem to be unaware as Christians that actually the realm of the spirit is our true realm, not the realm of the natural. Now, if you understand that, you can walk seamlessly in the miraculous. Because... One of the things I'm trusting God to do today, uh, you know, God to help us achieve today, is to understand that the miraculous is not something that we enter in once in a while. It's something that we are supposed to be experiencing on a daily basis. That is my mission. If every one of us, if God can bring that understanding and print it in our hearts that the miraculous, the realm of the spirit is our domain. And because it's our domain, that is where we live from. We don't live from here. We live from that realm. I mean, that realm, all things are possible. Praise God. In that realm, all things are possible. You know, so if we can understand that, that's why I really want to look at the life of Jesus Christ. Jesus in his, in his, in his earthly days was not, it's not like, you, you know, when you want to really do something that you know that you don't have the, 
you don't have the capacity to do. There's a way you gather strength. For example, now, I don't have capacity for preaching like this, like pastor. So when I'm called upon that I'm going to read, there's a way that I put extra effort to study. Do you understand? You know, but, or if I want to write, um, sit, uh, sit on an exam and all that, there's a way that I will put all my energy into it to, so that I can come, um, you know, at least pass the exam. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, so Jesus in his early days is not like he was trying to work it out. He practically lived in that realm. He lived in that realm in sense of it was a natural realm. It was his natural domain. You understand? It was his. He, he just walked comfortably. When you heard, when you heard that Jesus, when we read the um, the the um. How he fed the 5,000. You look at it. Just read it. You can look at that. It's, it's just simple, ordinary occurrence to him. How? It, do you have any? What, what do we give to these guys? They are hungry. There's nothing to give. So we have just, um, is it five loaves of two loaves and five fishes? Which one? Whichever, Asha, you know. But there's two and five. You know, then, okay, let's, um, okay, just bring it. Father, I give you thanks. Okay, distribute to them. And everyone ate. So it was, it, it, trust me, Jesus didn't, there was no, I, I want to multiply this thing, I have to shock everybody that, you understand? It wasn't like that. It was just like, I just do it. You know the way you just, you are feeling like you want to use the toilet. You just naturally respond to it. Do you understand? You don't plan. You don't, oh, I want to use the toilet in the next 20 minutes. You, you, you see those calculations? It's not like that. It was a natural domain to him. He lived practically in that realm. So it was just an easy thing for him to just perform miracles. Okay, there is, there is no wine anymore for, in this party. Just fill the water. Fill the cake, um, the cake with water. Okay, go and bail. Go and fetch from it. And it was already wine. Those, those miracles of Jesus, one of the things that he should do to us, one of the things that it should do to us, it should imprint in our hearts that for a believer, the miraculous is, 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 our, is our true domain. It's our true, um, you know, and, and, and actually, one of the greatest miracles that has happened to us is the miracle of the new birth. We are born again. That's a great miracle. How Jesus raised us from the dead. Say you were dead in trespasses and sins, he made a life. That was a great miracle. And that domain, that, that, that status, we don't, we need to trust God to see, continue to unveil that to us, what that means. You know, the new birth. You know, the, the full import of the new birth, how that God has put authority upon us, confer authority, confer the great, the greatest power ever demonstrated by God residing in us. Praise God. You know, in the beginning, God made heaven and earth. He said, let there, let there be light. You see, God was just creating. Let there be light. Let, it, let the, um, the, uh, the sun divide the day from the night. You know, God was just declaring. You know, that power, that whole energy, you know, is in the spirit. And by the, the Holy Spirit in dwelling us, that power resides in us. How can we, you know, why I'm saying this, why I'm saying this is that we don't have to, we should not die like mere men. When I say die, I'm not saying uh, literal death. But I'm saying, I am saying that we should not succumb to what we call usual occurrence. Do you understand? Uh, by that definition of, um, uh, what's it called? Miraculous. Usual, that, that defined natural, we should not succumb to natural course of nature. That's what I'm saying. You know, please, I want us to read, um, let's read about the, how Jesus walked on water. That's in Matthew chapter 14. Verse 22 to 23. Mary, I say that I just want to just narrow on the miracles of Jesus. 
I'm reading from 22 to 29. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him onto the other side while he sent the multitude away. Now this was just immediately after he fed um, the multitude. You know, and when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch, of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on water to go to Jesus. Simple scenario. That simple scenario that simple scenario of um, Jesus wanted to do the same thing he, he always did, to withdraw and to pray. But this time around, he needed to go with his disciples, and the disciple had gone into the midst of the water on the boat, on the ship. And when he was done, what he simply did was just that he was walking towards them. Somewhere I just feel that maybe Jesus didn't even realize that he was walking on water. He was just walking. When he got to the shore, the boundary between land and water, he didn't, ah, this is water, this is water. You, do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? There is this, 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 this barrier that Jesus didn't have, this limitation. You know, it is that limitation that, that bars us from, from experiencing the mirror. We think that, you know, somewhere we classify some things as, ah, great things. Some things small. This small one is simple. You know, these great things, you need great faith. Do you understand to, you know, when, if God can remove such, such limitations, such things that, you know, we would easily, we will experience miracle, mi miraculous things without even knowing. Do you understand? You just notice that things that are happening to you, you are not aware. But on a look at it, how did this guy do, how did, he, how did this happen to him? This is, a great, this is a man of great faith. But you didn't actually realize that you are applying faith. But you were working based on the understanding that there is actually nothing impossible. There is no separation between, um, uh, between there is no separation between great thing and small thing. Everything is the same in the sight of God. Praise God. And also when Jesus was walking on the water and they saw him, this must be a ghost. You know, because it's something that has never been heard or seen before. You know, I want to explain the last two verses, um, 28. Go back to 28. Out of fear, they cried out and said, um, Lord, Jesus said, ah, do not be afraid. It is, it is me. So, Lord, and Peter answered and said unto him, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come. Now, on the flip side, on the flip side of this scripture, if um, if, <laughs> if it be thou, bid me come. Now, what if it was not, listen, if it was not Christ. Now, you know, Peter was saying, why, why Peter is saying, why Peter said, he said, if it be thou, bid me come. Now, this is coming from, this is coming from an understanding, an understanding of the realm of the spirit. Now, what, I'm, what I mean is this. Initially, they feared that it was an evil spirit or it was, an, it was a spirit coming to them. You know, 
And Peter was, in a way, addressing that spirit. If it was you, Lord, bid me come. And he knows that if it was a spirit, listen, if it was a spirit, the spirit cannot bid him come. Now, to bid them is to command. Do you understand? To bid someone to come is to command me to come. A spirit, an evil spirit cannot command a believer. That's just a simple understanding. But if it was Christ, Christ can command our obedience. Praise God. You know, so, so Peter was speaking from a, a point of, if it was an evil spirit, you cannot, it, that's why I said earlier that the realm of the spirit is a, is a realm of order. An evil spirit, can, that is why we, 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 we understand that an evil spirit cannot, cannot possess a believer. Do you understand? You know, a, a demon can try to play pranks around you, you know, inflict your body with sickness. It cannot succeed with that. You know, your mind with so much uh, thoughts and all that. But to come and stay in your body, full possession, and begin to operate through your body, that's not possible. Praise God. That is full, full command of your body, soul, and spirit. You know, it's a demon... Satan, as, is he powerful? He's not powerful. As powerful as we thought or we think he is, cannot, a baby believer cannot command the obedience of a baby believer. Praise God. Do you understand? If he stands, if he's standing in faith. So Peter was saying, if it be you, Lord, command me, come. And when, he, when the Lord commanded, bid, uh, bidded him to come, he walked also on water. It was not, it was not also a calculation. It was just a natural thing. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I said I was going to be sharing some um, personal um, experiences too. Um, I don't know. Pastor Emmanuel, can you remember on the 6th of June, 2010? It's a long time. I actually had to go back and check the date. Before I could. It's not like I was just calling it like that. Amen. You know, we were in Golden Gate. It was a Sunday and it rained from money all till. Manner you remember now? Yeah. It rained all day. It was a mass. Ma? It was June, on the on 6th of June. I checked it. It was a Sunday. Yes, ma. It rained heavily. The whole of Lagos was flooded. The whole of Lagos was flooded. We stayed at, um, we were in church from when we got to church in the morning. Till 7 p.m., waiting for the rain, I didn't subside. So we had to all wear that thing, that, that uh, post is still on Facebook. <laughs> you know, we had to wear, um, use a nylon. Yes, being back to sew a jacket. That was how we, how we left. It was Emmanuel Tessi, Femi Akinola, Rumi was there. I, you know, take me to bed, yes, sir. Joker, you know, and we just started going. We walked inside the flood from that from Golden Gate all the way to Obalende. If you see the if you saw the crowd everywhere, people waiting, stranded, vehicles stuck in the mud and all that. It was terrible. You know, my side of it was that I got to somewhere around Stadium or Suleri, if I can remember. I was new in Lagos at that time, so I I am not very familiar with where I was. You know, sometime. Um, at about past 11 p.m., I was there and I was going inside Ikorodu that night. When I, when, you, when I got to that point, it, we saw the, if, you, if you saw the crowd there, it was, ter- it was massive. People were waiting for vehicle and the, the vehicles were not coming. And while I was there, waiting, I, let you, I just prayed a simple prayer. And I said, Lord, send an angel. To take me out of this place. As I said a prayer. I didn't count. But it was less than a minute. It was as if it was the moment. I, it, was, it, it looks to me like it was the moment. That I, I turned. I just saw a vehicle. By default. I'm, I'm not like I was stopping. I just did like this. The guy just did like this to me. Come. Ah, I just ran. And every other person ran with me to the vehicle. And I just, in my mind, I say, my grace cover all of you. <laughs> you know, you know, 
The guy took me all the way. Didn't stop at K2. He went all the way, dropped me at my final bus stop. With AC warming us. As in, when I got, when I got home, <laughs> I was thinking about it. This... What did I say? I said, was warming us now. Oh, oh, heater, that's what I was say. I'm sorry, don't mind me. Sorry, thanks. You know, when I got home, I thought to myself, oh, this is a miracle. This must have been God. And I, sincerely, I have been in that state many times. There was also another time, this is almost recently, I was going to walk with my, we, my wife forgot something. Because we already, I was already running late. I left the car with her, so she turned back while I continued. But when I got down, I think somewhere around Jacob, if you, if you, the crowd was terrible, and the traffic was massive. And while I stood there again, I just, the same prayer I made, I said, Lord, send me an angel. And as soon as I finished that prayer, I just saw Pastor Lamide driving. I didn't even remember to say Pastor Lamide. I just ran into the road, Lamide! And he just parked. I said, God answered my prayer again today. You know, such, I have such many of those kind of experiences in different, um, different ways. You know, to me, it tells me that it is possible for us to truly launch into the miraculous. It is possible for us to stay there, live in it as our, as our domain. Praise God. Just like Jesus in his earthly days, Walked every moment in the, of his life in the supernatural. You know, this is... Now, I, I, I am not... Um, you, you see, I, lo I love... One thing I love, you know, the governing church for is every time... Um, is, Pastor, let me thank you. Thank God you're here. I, I, must, I must really say that it's a blessing that I'm under you, sir. You know, I have... I have... I have... I have seen how... You so much, Pastor, appreciate balance in, in everything you teach. Balance was key. It was one thing that stuck with me when I came to the governing church. You know, when I came to the governing church, Pastor was, it was, a, it like it was, Pastor was in a season of hacking things that are not accurate, inaccuracy. He was always attacking. Uh, God is judging uh, inaccuracy. God is judging uh, Shamga, uh, Sham, all those, uh, you know, there was a lot of language that Pastor was always churning out at that time. You know, it was like that. You know, but after everything, what I truly appreciated was, you know, he used to say something like, Pastor, he used to say something like, if you stretch any truth beyond its boundary, you get into error. You know, finance as or salvation, as, as beautiful as it is, you can stretch it and stretch it out of context. You know, you know I, that is one thing I have believed. I hope I have gotten it well. I am still trusting God to, you know, to solidify that work. Balance is very key. You know, we, there, if, you, if you know that there is somewhere a message of like abstract travel, supernatural, people just think that, one like is um like is sci-fi, you know that kind of message, you know it's 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 not it's not that's not a balanced message. Whilst we know that we can get into we the supernatural is our realm and that's where we are going, you know there's a way you can um, teach it and you teach it out of uh, out of context. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, and also for us there's also another way we have resigned, we have we have embraced what we what our understanding of kingdom. Has brought us to the, you know, Topper was saying something um, about somebody that, uh, that a God, uh, how, I, I can't remember how she described it, that um, she, it was having, is it low self esteem issue, that somebody bought a car or somebody had a, 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 a nice car and uh, in answer that these ones are not seeking kingdom, we, we are pursuing kingdom and all that. You, that, on that, that same mentality, we can carry it. Is what we also carry into kingdom sometimes, and we play down on the things on the things that are possible, especially in the miraculous. Praise God! There's a way we can resign that ah, is is God is God's sovereignty. Every time we resign into God's sovereignty, so, you know, sovereignty as it is also, it's also a contest that you, it's also a, a, a an under, a thought. 
that we still need to stay within balance. You cannot take sovereignty, sovereignty out of context, and you miss it again. Praise God. So I'm saying that we can miss it on this side as much as we can also miss it on the other side. Praise God. So the, 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 I, but what I really want our hearts to really trust God for is to believe that, have faith in our heart that the miraculous is possible. Amen? That the miraculous is possible. You know, um, let's read Matthew chapter 17, verse 24 to 27. I'm just trusting God to read this, your, your version, you know, 24 to 27. He said, and um, when they were come to Capernaum, that they received, <laughs> that, oh, they that received tribute, tribute money came to Peter and said, does not your master pay tribute? Now, tribute here is tax. This temple tax they're talking about. He said, yes. And when he was come into the house, Jesus prevented him. Jesus, am I correct? Jesus prevented him saying, what thinkest thou, Simeon, Simon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? Of their own children or strangers? Peter said unto him, of strangers. Jesus said unto him, Then the children are free. Notwithstanding, least we, of, we should offend them. Go down to the, to the sea and cast an hook and, and take up the fish that first cometh up. And when, thou, and when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money that, that take and give unto them for me and thee. Amen. Now, is this miraculous? This is also a miracle. This is, this is. Now, the temple tax is a tax in the custom uh, in the Jewish custom paid by um, every male who is above twenty years. You know, and I, 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 he, 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 he is 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 just, is a, is, a, is a practice handed over to them from Moses. You know, in about on this day, just this, on this day, Jesus went to the, uh, got there, and they were requesting that money. But frankly, there was no money. There was no money. You know, but Jesus was asking Peter, of whom do they, uh, of whom do the, do they collect? Is it from the children or from the, from, he said, he's of, he's of strangers. He said, then the children are free. And one of the things I also believe Jesus was saying there, that this is my father's house. I should be free from paying tax. <laughs> Do you understand? But however, so we don't offend them. Please go and get money and pay them. You know, but the way the money came was something, was something again that when we look at it, we think it's something very big. It's great. But, but with Jesus, it, wasn't, it, it didn't matter to him at all. It didn't. If you met him afterwards, it wasn't like, yeah, there is a great thing, you know. What was this? You know, he, he recognized that this is our domain. Okay, we just the same way you get to a supermarket or you get you went to shop, right? You went to shop, and you don't have money, and is a there is a need. And now, what do we do? Sometimes we just resign. Please, I'm not. Please note, I don't want us to become spooky and lacking. Um, sometimes common sense. Do you understand? It's not like I don't. I want to. I'll go to. I'll go to take some things in shop. Right. I'll just. Bump. I know that there's no money in my account. I go and use. Do you, do, do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? It, th th that that is not taking away common sense from us. You know. You know. But Jesus told them go and get do this, and the guy went, and he was done. Now, practically. How does this, what does this mean to us? What does, if, if, what does this mean to us? Sometimes we get to a point where, you know, I love the, the, the message that Pastor Shape about Sabbath. We can't all be, be we, will not, we will not all, or we can't all be, which one is most appropriate? <laughs> be billionaires. Or, rather, we, or we may not, let me just put it where I can, let me, let me stay on a safe place. 
We may not all be billionaires. Do you understand? But we will all be well taken care of. All our needs will be well taken care of. Praise God. Now, the fact that I don't have the 1.5 million naira job per month does not in any way take away the fact that I can live comfortably. Do you understand? Live well. All my needs met with the small job I have that is paying me maybe a 50,000 naira per month. Praise God. Now, um, um, you know, Pastor Shea was talking that day and he talked, he, he talked so much about how God, Sabbath, God used that to, you know, there's a multiplication he was trying to explain that day. I can't uh, exactly capture the words, you know. You know, but frankly, what we earn, what we earn is not what, it's not, it's not what we live by. Thank you, ma. If there is anything that we should have, if we have been in this house for, a, for some years, one thing that we should have learned, all learned from our pastor is to live a life that fully depends on God, not on our means. Praise God. You know, that is one thing that we should, we should of necessity learn. Because that was a mark them. Do you understand? One of the things that you mark about them is not that mark them whether they are when they are when they are, when they are missing it. You know, you the, when they are missing it, I will not follow them. I miss it too. Do you mark them when they, when you see the good things about them, try to live it also. That's what the Bible says. Mark them. Praise God. You know, so um, finance, finance. We need to really we we need God. We I, I want us to also begin to. Believe God for in that realm that we can enter that realm. When I say enter that realm, means that all our needs can be met sufficiently and not lacking anything. Praise God. It is possible. Do you believe it is possible? That is very possible. You know, but we can be here and be subjected to the fact that there is inflation. That's common course. What is happening to everybody? There's oh, the exchange rate has increased and your salary is not what it used to be. Do you understand? You see all those explanations. Eh? They first shut down. They first shut down your ability to even have faith in God. To, 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 uh, to rise above that. Um, <clears throat> some years ago, <clears throat> I frankly, if you know, if you, for those of you that are very close to me, you know that I'm from a very, very humble background. From a very, very humble background. When you say a very humble background, that is on the, that is on the floor practically. You know, uh, is is our our growing up was was not was fun. But when you look at it now, you know, it wasn't fun. Praise God, it wasn't fun. You know, the first time real cash entered my hand, I looked at it. I said, God, I wish I'm earning like this every month. Praise God. Now, how did it happen? My salary was just 50,000 naira at that time. You know, but in the office, my office, there was something that happened. There was a card my office wanted to put, um, they just put on bid that uh, staff should just bid for it. Do you understand? That um, whoever is interested should just bid. I look at my, I didn't even have savings. Perhaps I was in that month, I already taking salary advance. So, the salary that was coming in that month was not even going to be enough to start with. You know, not to talk about having savings. You know, I, somewhere, I just, let me just, I, I don't even, I didn't even understand what bid was about so, so, so much. Just let me just play. I saw the man, I just responded that I'm interested. Do you understand? <laughs> Car one point something million. I don't even have, yeah, I just, I just, I'm interested. You know, and, um, so it happened that only three people be there for that car. So there were a lot of politics. I let me not go into that. You know, finally, they now invited three of us that, um, that it seemed that three people have interest in this car. By that time, I was not looking at myself. Oh, is it me that be there for the car? So I was thinking to myself. So they were now asking me, okay, uh, Richard, what is your interest in the car? The MD needs um, someone, the person that will own this car. 
must be able to must be someone that that will be able to um maintain it. Do you understand? You know, I don't look at me, I say maintain this car. <laughs> you know, so I thought all that. So I just opened up to my boss. I said, sir, my interest is I want to buy it, sell it, and take the what my interest is the money that will come from it, you know, and all that. You know, but as as God will have it, the company just decided that okay, we are not selling again. We dash the car to the three of you. Sell it and share the money. So when that money entered my hand, I think I thought about God. How did I even get here in the first place? You know, I looked at the process. It wasn't it wasn't like something that I, I planned to do. Do you understand? I, if I knew that, perhaps if I knew that in the end they are going to give us the car, if if every one of us knew. The whole of the office would have be there for the car. At the end of the day, <laughs> maybe it's fifty thousand naira that will come to you. Do you understand? You know, but but God so did it that. So when I talked to myself, say, what, what was in my head that I be there for this car? You know, it was all joke. I was just trying to have the phone or bid, and God, it just turned out. That scenario have happened twice in my office. Praise God. You know, this this. Issue of God. You know, about, <coughs> excuse me. I have, growing up, uh, in my early days, when I gave my life to Christ, you know, that also experience have, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just sharing myself. I hope we are being blessed. Please. Okay. Uh, you know, um, two of these, I've had to do these two experiences, one recently and one a long time. When I had a need, there was a work that I needed. I wanted to get um, a, 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 a minister at that time was doing an outreach somewhere in in the east, and I was I was very young. I was still I just left secondary school, and and I was just praying to God. I knew that my for my I can't go and ask my father that that I need like four thousand to go somewhere and come back. That that's a means for like two months. You are talking about four thousand. Do you understand? So I'm like, how do I do this? You know, so I just kept, it was, a, it was a concern in my heart. I kept taking it to God in prayer. I kept asking God, Lord, make a way. Lord, make a way. I just kept praying. You know, it was almost a unique, those people that want to go should make payment and all that. One day, I think one Saturday, I can't remember the day, I was just checking my wardrobe. I just checked my clothes. I just, my pocket. I saw mint. Mint. The exact money I was trusting God for. I asked everybody in the house, did anybody keep money in my pocket? Nobody, everybody said no. And I looked at it. And I shared with my, my, my parents that I've been asking God for this amount of money for a long time. You know, and the same money, exact money I needed, it was about 4000 at that time. Mint, you know, was kept in my pocket. And I, 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 when, I, when I took that money and I was going to pay, it was... In my heart, it was, that was a strong courage in my heart that God, God really cares about us. You see, this message of the kingdom that we are hearing is what will save us. You know, it will, it is what we meet our needs, our, our everyday need. It will meet it. It's, it's, it's that potent. Do you understand? In our recent, I've also experienced that I was really, I was really out of cash. You know, when I was with your chorus, I used to, I used to, there's this joke I used to make that. Once in a while, I forget money in my pocket. I used to tell the ladies in the other, people can wash my clothes. So if, you, if you wash my clothes, you'll be handsomely rewarded because there will always be cash in my pocket. You know, you know but it was just a joke. And because from time to time, I forget like that. But this day, I was, I was really, really very rich. In fact, the house was a little low on cash. You know, so... In fact, my, the way I got back home from work that day was a miracle too, you know, for another day. You know, but the next day, as I just took my time and I went away, I just brought that money in my pocket. I said, babe, see. It was, it, those kind of things, it's, it's their little. You know, um, Pastor Bus, uh, Rabusaya, uh, there was a writer of Rabusaya did some time ago, I talked about little mercy. I don't know if you read that. that, that. You know, see, those little mercy. There's a way that it solidifies our faith and our conviction in the word of God. It tells us that God really cares about us. 
that it tells us that it is possible. It's in fact, it tells us that perfection is possible. Praise God. You know, it gives us that assurance. Amen. Um, very quickly. <clears throat> ah, don't go do it. Ah, I tried. It's no random. <clears throat> very quickly, I just want to talk about. Um, there's still one more. Um, thank you, man. Let's see. Read this. Okay, Mark chapter 11, 12, Mark 11. Okay. And on the, on the, on the morrow, <laughs> you know, I have challenge reading first in the first place to read out. I have challenge. Now you now give, it was now reading King James. It's even more challenging. Do you understand? You know, he said, and the morrow, when the, on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if happily, he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of fig was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit from thee after, hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Um, let me spare us all the long story. We know he went, they went to Jerusalem and all that. Go close to, maybe let's go from 25 to 27. Are we there? Okay. And when you stand praying, forgive. I'm actually looking for, yeah, when they were coming back, yes. Okay, please, thanks. I tried to 25, I don't know. No, back, go back a bit. Maybe it's top of 20, let's see. Okay, yes. And when even was, even was come, he went out of the city, okay? And in the, mon and in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling out remembrance, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou causest is withered away. And Jesus answered and said unto him, have faith in God. Have faith in God. And, um, <clears throat> you know, there are so many understandings we can bring out from here. And there have been a lot of revelations that in the past that I, I've heard people, you know, preach out of this. Especially in the place where they say that it was not a time for fig. You know that. You know, you know but all that, I am not really interested. But for me... You know, when I read this, what it means to me is that Jesus, you know, you know the same way you, you just say a word. Do you understand? And, and it was just natural to him. Now, it's it just the same way, for example, you, you are in a, in a bus or, for example, and maybe the, the, the driver is just being stubborn and... Reckless and all that, you know, several one you are, and you just tell him and say that the way you are going, you may not get to where you are going. Or you you uh, they will, you will soon be apprehended. And you get up on the vehicle only for you to after a few buses, you now find out that last man has impounded his vehicle. Do you understand? You know, it just it's just as ordinary as that. Do you understand? It's as ordinary as that. You know, and Jesus said, and Jesus said, Let no man eat from you anymore. And the next day, the tree was dry to its roots. You know, that is awesome. That is the power of words. And it has, 
is, 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 we are, and that's this, the same kind of people that we are. And we must recognize it. You know, um, my, someone in my, in my, a colleague asked me about my child, a baby. I, ah, how is your baby doing? I said, my baby is fine. So, I you know, out of the excitement, out of the phone, I just said, ah, if you carry my baby now, all, you just empty saliva, all, saliva all over your face and all that. She was not, he was not telling me that, eh, yeah, maybe he's teething. You know, he's teething. Um, you know, ah, you be prepared though. When, when it's teething time, you know, they have, um, some, some of them have miso, some of them have temper. I just said, no, that's not my child. You know, I just started, I just shut him down immediately. I started saying the kind of child I have. You know, and every time I carry my child and I am, I am always, I'm always praying. I'm always declaring what I want from, what I want to see. I'm always confessing the word of God over her. You know, if, in fact, if not even be, before that incident happened, I have already, my heart is like, I have seen children teeth without issue. Just teeth easily. Do you understand? Now, I believe that, i I rather choose that than believe that she will run temperature when she's teething. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, because the, 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 the understanding of we, we must really appreciate, you know, that what we really, what our heart is set upon is what God gives to us. If your heart does not appreciate it, you can never attain it. You will not. You will not. People, you know, as natural as labor and legitimate or as, as ordinary as that seem, it's not ordinary. You can press beyond that. Praise God. We can press beyond those Succumbing to those natural uh, uh, order, you know. A and this is where now the sovereignty of God now come. Do you understand? That if it, I, I, I think it, that would be my concluding thoughts. You know, recently I, I've been trusting God with someone for a miracle too. You know, and for a miracle. And, you know, but Proverbs said, they said that, Hope deferred. Say, so make the heart sick. You know, while we are trusting God for miracle, and the miraculous does not happen, it does not happen as our heart is said. We must also learn. We must learn that in all situations, God is still God. Praise God. We must learn to that heartbreak that comes with it, that disappointment that comes, we must learn to manage it. That is where we know that God is the one who determines which way. The pendulum swings. Praise God. You know, but it does not in any way restrain us from believing God that that realm, that dimension is possible. Praise the Lord. So for me, this is just, Jesus just spoke the word. You know, you know, just, just the same way that we, you know that the word of, the word actually respond, the word actually respond to our emotions. Praise God. You know, Moses was, um, God told Moses, speak to the rock. Moses, out of anger, struck the rock. What happened? Water still came out. But the result was not, do you understand? You know, the outcome in the spirit was not the same. You know, you know but sometimes, it, that's the same way. You know, from our, from our disposition in the spirit, when we speak the word, it is as potent. Do you understand? As when God said, let there be light. Praise God. And other times, a, a mere understanding. I, I, I've heard of somebody who said that, he shared a testament that he was, um, that, you know, there are people who have pressed, God has helped them in their health and they've risen beyond um, falling sick and all that, you know. That this person that, there was a day that he was having this headache and it was strange. He didn't pray. He said he just did like I was told. That he just did something like this. I, as he was removing his hand, the headache, like he just felt like some, a soft hand was coming out. Do you understand? You know, this is sometimes understanding. Do you understand? Sometimes under, there is a lot that understanding do, do to us in terms of how much we can advance in the miraculous. Understanding is very vital. 
you know, that, um, that, is it the rich centurion? Uh, when he came to Jesus and said, uh, he sent his servant, uh, he came to, he and said, my servant, is it my child or my servant is sick or something? And Jesus was going to jo follow him. He said, no, just speak the word. I am also a man under authority. I say to one, go, and the other come, and he goes, and he comes, and all that. You know, such understanding, as little as, not, let me, it's not little, as potent as that is, is, if you speak a word from that dimension, is as potent as when God truly was creating. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand? You know, so that, we must appreciate that, the potency of that in our hearts. You know, so all these miracles that we saw today, you know, there are a lot of miracles in the scripture that scripture, you know, outlined for us. You know, I, I'm, I'm rounding up. I just want to highlight uh, a few things that I think, uh, that I feel that they are important, you know, in, 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 in walking in the miraculous very quickly. The last uh, um, scripture I'll read is Philippians 2. You can just go there. You know, one is, um, you know, for us to be able to, do I call it, do I say it's conditions to walk in, or do I say, just shall know that some things that should just be in place. Do you understand? You know, for you to really, you know, is one I, 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 I captured as obedience and loyalty to the cause of God. Do you understand? Obedience and loyalty to the cause of God. Please, go to uh, Philippians chapter 2. Philippians 2. Just give me the next five minutes, I'll be out. Philippians 2. No, let's start from 3, I guess. Or 5, from 5. Let this mind be in you. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon himself Upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in the fashion as a man, humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. In our obedience and loyalty, Jesus was the the there was no agenda of Jesus other than the agenda of the Father. Do you understand? Now, if we reach that is our if that is our if our goal. If our, our aim in life is, if our life is in obedience to the word, to, to God, the cause of God, loyalty to the cause of God, if we, we will constantly find out that we are just experiencing some kind of miracle because you are in alignment. That's another thing. Praise God. You know, you are in alignment with God. That's, an, that's the second thing. Alignment with God, it's almost the same thing as obedience, but in a, in a sense, it's being in the center of God's will. Do you understand what I'm saying? And now those things are, you know, positive or conf the language of faith. They are, I think Proverbs chapter, is it 13 or 18? That says that death and life is in the power of the tongue and those that love it will eat its fruit. You know, it's, we must learn to speak the word of God. The, word, the language of God is the language of faith. Do you understand? When situation, when we see situations that are not pleasant, let's not be quick to resign. Do you understand? You are in business. We need, oh, today I, oh my God. Today I read, um, I, I was checking, I was going through my Facebook page. I, 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 I saw a, a story that, that broke my heart, you know, and it just, a, a 20, she was 27, or 26, when she had the pregnancy, you know, this lady was diagnosed with cancer, but at that time, she was pregnant. You know, and um, they wanted to, um, uh, you know, uh, the doctor recommended that uh, the chemo and all that. She refused it because the import was that it was going to affect the baby. You know, I don't know how it was going to affect the baby, you know, but it was going to affect the man. She, re she refused it. And uh, she gave birth to the baby successfully, and um, I think a year or two after, she died. You know, and I read that story, and my heart went again. I said, God, what is the solution to this cancer? 
Do you understand? Can people dare God? Can people believe God for? You know, these are the days, we are living in the days where it's just not, it's just not safe for us to just live nominally. You know, we must, our heart must constantly trust God for such miracles. People can, believers can be dying of such things. Do you understand? You know, we, we, we must, we must, we must, we must let to put pressure on heaven. Do you understand? In our hearts, concerning such matters, such, concerning such things. But if we must, we, we, we can if we don't learn to, if we don't learn to, if we don't learn to trust God for simple headache, simple malaria, how can we deal with cancer? But that, in a sense, you know what he's saying again. It's also class, it's the same limitation that limits us from working the miracle, miraculous. There is big issue and small issue. But in the sight of God, there is no such thing. Every, the same way, the same power that it takes God to heal headache is the same thing it takes God to heal, to raise the dead. Not, nothing special in the sight of God. You know, but the limitation is with man. Ah, death is a, big, is a bigger issue than headache. Do you understand? Once we come to that state, we have already shut down possibilities somewhere. Do you understand? You know, but we must trust God for mirac the miraculous every time. Let it be our routine. Let it be our daily life. Honestly, I'm not exaggerating. In little ways, I just see as simple as some, I'm very selective when it comes to the kind of vehicle I, I enter. I, they, I love some comfort. Even I enter. You, you know, so, I, I, so I, when I get to Boston, I'll just pray. I say, God, I want a vehicle that has AC. And I'll just, I'll just choose. <laughs> oh, sometimes it doesn't happen. Many of the times it does happen. Praise God. You know, but I, I'm releasing my faith every time. Let's release our faith for the miracle loss. Wherever we are, the state where we are, you don't need to be a son, when I say a son, you don't have to have attained the fullness of Christ before you can walk in the miraculous. Do you understand? A child of God, as Jesus Christ, uh, 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 he said, I give unto you authority. Do you understand? To cast out. You understand? You know, we, as a baby Christian, you can trust God also for the miraculous. May God bless us in Jesus' name. I just said thank you, Richard. That was beautiful. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. I want to read two scriptures to us just to just to uh, sort of Reiterate the foundation Richard said. First Job chapter 5, verse 9. Job 5, 9. The scripture says, Which dwelt great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number, not describing God, that God does great things. So sometimes in the Bible, the word miracles or miraculous may not future as miracles. Great things is considered as miracles. And the word great things is, uh, those two words are taken from uh, a single word in Hebrew uh, that is called gadol. The word gadol means something beyond words. And something beyond human imagination. So that's why we say the word Gadol. So describing God. God is God as in like doing great things that surpasses human perception and imagination. It's just like drinking water for God. You know, as in like what God does at will. Praise God. And not only that, he does marvelous things that cannot be that cannot be numbered. The word number there is well quantified. So the word marvelous things is another word. The word uh, 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 pala. Pala in Hebrew is a common word that means miracles. In, in Isaiah 9, 6, when the Bible says, and his name shall be called wonderful. The word wonderful is actually the word, it's taken from the word pala. It means miracle working God. 
I did the miracle worker. He is a miracle worker. So uh, that's Hebrew. Now, uh, Richard told us that the word miracle is taken from the Greek word Simeon. Simeon, Simeon. Actually, the word Simeon in the New Testament is a word that's often used to describe the word signs. Let's look at Acts 2.22. I hope Acts 2.22 used the word. The Bible says, okay, Acts 2.22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders. Now, many times the word miracles in the New Testament is not the word miracles you will find there. The word miracles here, which the case is in many cases, is what dunamis, which means divine ability. Dunamis generally means ability. Praise God. So, so he's talking about the power of God. Power. So it's a power of God that works out miraculous. You can't really separate power from miraculous. Is that right? A power is like the the uh, the force that you set into motion that actually reverses the common cause or the natural cause of life. Praise God. So the power of God, now the word wonders, it does wonders. The word wonders is a word in Greek called teras. Is what teras. The word teras means extraordinary. What is beyond, you know, uh, the natural. What is beyond the natural order. That is what transcends the natural order. Extraordinary. So the, then the word signs is what Simeon. The word Simeon, the word Simeon sometimes you use, you, the, it, it, you get the word token. Token or mark. You know, when Richard was described, was defining miracles or miraculous to us, he said it is like, use the word, I hope this is what you said. But so he said something that sounds like this to me. Like the mark of divine attestation by which God authenticates an individual that is sent by God. Praise God. So he said, that's, that's, that's what signs in some sense. Now, now, apart from the mark of God, then the other definition he gave us, which uh, he referred to uh, miracles or miraculous, or miraculous as... Um, Something like, he said something like, uh, occurrence, an unusual occurrence that transcends common cause of nature. He tells us, the reader told us that miracles is an unusual occurrence that transcends common cause of nature. Those of you that didn't come early, you actually missed. Because if they began to share from, you know, contemporary examples, but first of all, he's actually giving us the team. He's downloaded the teachings, and I really appreciate that. You know, those are some of the definitions he gave us in the initial understanding. And then he went, on to, he went on to tell us that God is a God of order. The realm of the spirit is a dimension of order. The realm of the spirit responds to order. This is what it means. If your defense spiritually is intact. No demon has a right to come near you. Now, if I'm living in offense, now I have broken the edge. I am out of order. That means I'm successful. I'm vulnerable. I'm susceptible. I'm vulnerable. So, I am out of order. Now, when some stuff happens, like, you know, uh, as in like the enemy comes and molests me. Now, I, 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 I open the door. And it's always good. You know, it's sometimes it's a blessing to know that this is actually what I did. I need to sort, sort this out. But what that simply means is that order, the realm of the spirit is a dimension that responds to order. It's a dimension of life that responds to order. So, if we are people 
that will foster the miraculous. If we're going to walk in the faith for the miraculous, we must always make sure our lives are in order and in alignment. So that's why you can actually take away through, I'm not talking about someone. You see, miracle is not what we do in church and we move from mountain to mountain. That's not miracles. Praise God. That's not the mindset. The mindset is that supernatural should become our natural habitat. It should become our, our daily reality. That's the way we respond to miracles. And miracles is not by human definition, human calculation. You don't know what I mean by that. Miracle is not like I got married now, and then three months into my marriage, I had twins. I don't know if you get twins. That's not miracles. Praise God. You know, what, what that means is that exactly nine months and then children came. Glory be to God. You are very fat. Blessing. We give glory to God for that. Praise God. And you know, God has put that in place. But do you know sometimes nine months came. You've been confessing the things 10 years before your marriage. I call it for. You know, someone once told a friend of mine a couple of years ago, many years ago, you know, when you have when you seek cancer from wrong cause source, she was just she was just looking for encouragement. And the lady said that your problem is that you're not married. You're not married at age 35. Now this fellow is still going to was still going to wait for another like 13 years before she is finally getting married now. Praise God. Imagine at age 35, someone was telling her that. Ah, uh, you're not married. You say, oh, my, 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 my. You don't understand the walking of faith. You see, by the time I was 19, I was already confessing that in Jesus' name, I'm getting married at age 25. 25, whatever year, I've confessed the age. I'm getting married. I'm having four, three children. I said, two boys, one girl. And now I'm married. I got married at that age. I have three children. Two boys, one girl. You know, she was just, she was saying all the things that she was confessing, going on, and everything was just happening like that. Actually, God bless your soul. If you, if you have it like that, you know, that, that's fantastic. The, 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 but the only thing that I told her that, don't mind that. You see, faith is not straight jacketed. It doesn't mean that you will confess your own like that, and you have it exactly like that. Praise God. Each faith is not a formula. Somebody else, the faith he actually needs to be at work is that you got married now. Child, no come. You have been confessing children. No? And then two years after, child, no come. Four years, no child came. No? Five years, you're still battling with child. Now, let me tell you what miraculous is. Those five years, ability to live that you're not living in misery. I don't know if you get it. You know, that's what miracles is. Ability to find fulfillment beyond the natural course of life. That you are living in so much joy and fulfillment as if you have all the children. I mean, I can preach that because I'm a testimony to that. So, you know, for people who are personally close to me, all those years of waiting, you will never find one second of mystery. And you can't make it up because you will break down. Praise God. You know what I mean by that? So you can't fake it. You can't fake it. I not one second of worry. I've, does that mean that I was not, I've not found myself, I never found myself over a period of 13, 14 years, I never found myself in a situation where people said things that could hurt me. They said, I had a lot that could hurt me, but they could not hurt me. They could hurt me, but they not hurt me because I was operating in a realm above that. That's what miracles is. It's the ability to connect to the realm of the spirit, which is a dimension of all possibilities. Praise God. So supernatural goes beyond having what the natural order could provide. Supernatural is that even when the natural order is not making it happen, ability to live above the shadows, 
is the is, is a mirror. And that same attitude and mindset and faith will cause you to be victorious and fulfilled when there is no job. That same attitude and mindset will make you to feed six people under your shelter, even though you are not well paid. That same attitude and that same expectation will create a job. One day you'll just be employing people and you'll be paying people what oil companies that people are dying for, you'll be paying them. Praise God. It is still that faith that will create it when the season comes. But we need to understand the basics. That's, that is what the message of today is about. You know, the point is the one thing you cannot, there are, there are about three things we cannot, we can't like model up. One of the things we cannot model up, we cannot model up is that God is sovereign. And one of the laws of the sovereignty of God is that, do you know each one of God, God has carved out our path. And there's nothing you can do about it. John cannot force himself into the pattern that heaven has designed for Tutu. He will wound. I don't know if you get what I mean. So we just, you cannot use another person's, another person's design to interpret your life. So what you need to do is to connect to God's word and to connect to God's spirit in order to find proximity and intimacy with the Lord so that from there you will live out heaven's design for you and miracles will just happen. You will be an epitome of miracle. In living out your design. Whether it's the children that are not coming, miracles will flow. Praise God. You will become an evidence of someone who have a delay, who, who, have, who seems to have delay in marriage, and people can see that life, and yet they could see integrity, and see chastity, and see purpose, and see love. Praise God. You know, you know, faith, miraculous is not that, you know, all those period of waiting, you are so miserable. And at the end of the day, ah, oh, I thank you. That's not miraculous. Praise God. That's not miraculous. You were completely shattered. The, all those period of waiting, if one nine has slept with you and has taken off, all manner of nonsense has happened to you. You thought you, you, you another one. You, you do, there's even one that you almost took another person's husband and wife. I said the, the wife, I'm husband. I said the wife went after you and stabbed you one day and you let go. And you know, you, you just, you, woo, 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 you just have tried to do everything. And someday, Sha. That's not God. Praise God. It's the it's an ability to wait. Until when my season comes. That's what miraculous is. So, you, you know, you just understand the sovereignty of God in that regard. Another thing we can't do anything about is seasons of our lives. Someone can be living in a season where money is not coming so much. And the fact that money is coming a lot in another person's life, there's nothing you can If you force yourself into money at that point in time, you realize that you will interrupt the program of God. So you must learn in that phase. You know, I was watching a, go, a, a music on, 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 on YouTube yesterday and I was so greatly ministered to. This guy said he lost his job. Just before he's lost his job, as a single guy, his mom came down with and then he lost his job. In the course of battling with it, the last one in the family had leukemia. And it was like thick darkness completely engrossed them. And then in there, God reached out to him. God gave him a song. That's the song he was singing. And while he's singing the song, he found strength. And he found breathing space. And he learned to give thanks to God. 
and give God the glory. And he said he came to one understanding. The understanding is that God, if I can always have it my way, you will be glorified. And in the middle of that understanding, the mother overcame cancer. And his brother overcame leukemia. They became totally free. But God has to do something in him first. God brought him to a place of surrender. Praise God. So for that, Avon said, you know, Richard said some very critical things. One of the things he said is that, you know, as far as God is concerned, there's no little miracle and big miracle. God never class, classifies miracles into size, sizes and shapes. You know, as far as God is concerned, cure healing headache is as good as raising the dead. The barrier is in the mind of man. Praise God. And if God can just help us overcome that barrier, we'll just be raising dead anyhow. The way we speak to headache to cease. You know, so, you know, some of us are so secular that we don't even speak to headache. You know what I mean by that? If anything comes like this, if you pain like this, this next thing is to be for paracetamol. Praise God. When you feel it, the next thing is to speak the word. You speak the word. In Jesus' name, I speak the word. The first thing, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Headache, you are not there. The way you should be know, we should know that you are having headache is why you're saying in Jesus' name, I rebuke your headache. Praise God. That, and it's not just healing every aspect of life. Our first, our first response must not be to seek the alternative. Our first response must be the application of the power of God. And then before you know it, you realize that it's gone before you realize it. Praise God. Now, I'm not saying we should not, I'm not saying that medical science is satanic. Some people have the attitude of medical science is diabolical. It's, uh, it's like you're visiting Babalao. That's not what medical science is. Actually, I often say some of this medication is leaves. And it's like food substance that they use to put it there. If you actually live right, you wouldn't need it many times. But what I'm saying is that our first response must always be to activate our, to set our faith in motion. We should be so used to that. The, the law of health, let me tell you, that the faith, this is not faith. You break all the laws of health, you eat the wrong thing, you imbibe long, wrong lifestyle, you, you consume sodas, you drink soda and and eat dairy product, junk, and all that, and all that, and all that, and then before yeah, you are now saying, in Jesus' name, I rebuke you. The team will rebuke you. <laughs> because it's going to God tell to, it will tell God that God, this fellow does not have the right. Because he has given me the right. He's broken the edge. So the law of health requires obedience. It requires enlightenment. It requires discipline. But generally speaking, our first response must be to plug into the power of God, not to seek for the alternative. And that's the mindset that we, we, we ought to have. Praise God. So I was so blessed by all the, you know, uh, the, particularly the, the initial things, you know, Richard, you know, talks about. Uh, uh, let me just put it all into three things. There are three things. Plugging into God's power, you know, that came out from what Richard shared with. Okay, maybe four. The first one is we need to deal with the regard for an expectation of the process of decomposition 
that sets in by nature. We need to deal with the regard for an expectation of the process of decomposition that sets in by nature. You know, Richard said, started with something like that. There's a natural expectation that as time passes by, everything withers away. There's a natural expectation that people at the twine life, light of their life, life collapses. People go through depression. I don't know why you want to go through depression in your late 50s. And people said, you know, at that point in time, you will, you will have been maybe approaching retirement age, about to retire. At that point in time, your children will have been getting ready to leave you alone so that at that time you start going through loneliness, you start going through depression, and then it is natural. Praise God. It's not natural for me. All those things that... People just tell you that this is expected. At this point in life, this should happen. At this point in life, you know, one terrible disease or the other, if you are not nursing, you know, uh, low, uh, high blood pressure, if you are not seeing uh, sugar, diabetics, if you are not nursing diabetes, you'll be getting their stroke experience. You'll be, <laughs> you know, I, I, all those things. Yes, now, at certain, at, at a point in life. Is a choice, so. You can take your own. Praise God. Me have decided na peace I go take. In my old age, I want to be walking around. In my 90s, I want to be preaching the gospel. Praise God. We, I don't want to use walking stick. Praise God. It is a choice. So don't consult science to determine your future. We consult science to have education so that we know, no, this is to be avoided. No, they, because the scripture, science is in the scripture. The Bible says we shouldn't eat pigs. And not do, there are a couple of things the scripture says we shouldn't eat. And science has actually confirmed the fact that those things are not good. They are not healthy. So we realize science is in the, if you study your Bible very well, you will, you will live right. Moderation, you find it in the scripture. So all the things that science says we shouldn't do, we shouldn't do. But, but when science begins to create an expectation, then you say, no, 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 no. no. Uh, yeah, we're, we, this time we're dealing with the king of science here. He's one living in me. Praise God. So we need to deal with that. What constitutes our reality? Not science. What constitutes our realities? Not the natural. What constitutes our realities must be the unseen dimension of life. And Richard, you know, emphasized that. So we need to get, and the beautiful thing about the word of God is that the word of God is the window to the invisible realities of God. So the more we get to understand the word, we pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, then the unseen dimension is, becomes attainable. Praise God. So that's very, very important. Another principle uh, we could see from Richard, from the message of today, is that we need to jettison any belief system that tends to limit the power of God and our expectation of God's wonders in our lives. Any belief system that tends to limit God's power and our expectations of his wonders, we've got to jettison it. Any belief system. Some of these things we pick them from childhood. Some of these things we pick them from learning 
institute. I'm talking about mindset. Some of these things is from our past. Our previous knowledge before coming into Christ. Sometimes religious spirit itself can put it on you. Cultural beliefs and traditions of men. Any belief systems that contradict God's word. God's word is a source of our authority. Any belief system that tends to limit the power of God. Praise God. That tends to limit the power of God. And the, our expectations of his wonders, we need to deal with it. Praise God. We've got to deal with it. We've got to deal with it. And let me tell you something. It is not true that as a child of God, you should not be walking in the realm of power so that you will not fall. You know, there's, a, there's something that tends to say that, no, don't walk in the power of God. Because, power, you know, healing, miracles are low levels. Praise God. Where is it written in the Bible? The healing, miracles, deliverance, they are low level. I'm talking about you casting out deliver the devils. When you see devils operate around, what, do you, what are you supposed to do? You rebuke and send it out. Praise God. You speak the word and cast it out. That's what you do. I don't care what, how you rate it, whether it's high or low. You're walking past somewhere and you see a cripple and you speak the word and raise him up and he walks. Have you walked in the low level of spirituality by that? <laughs> Praise God. I, it really doesn't, I don't care how you rate it, whether it's high or, or low level. You have established an end sign that God is, a, is alive in that, in that situation. In that environment. So it really doesn't matter. It could be high, it could be low. That's not what matters. You walk in God's power. Praise God. As opposed to be walking in God's power. Don't, don't follow people who deceive themselves. When you're, you see, we're not as high as we think we are. Praise God. When God is not really interested in taking us high. He's just interested in taking us to where he is. You know one of the places God is? Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who, were, who was anointed with the Holy Ghost. and we part. If Jesus went about doing goods and healing those who are oppressed of the devils, I want to be in that low level. Praise God. So God, God, God is not in competition for spirituality. No, that's not, that's not my Jesus. Praise God. So you go forth and walk in his power. Now, another thing is that God wants us to always remove ourselves from the equation. When you don't, you naturally will limit God. Never evaluate the pro prospect or anticipation for the miraculous with your limited human ability. Never evaluate the prospect and anticipation for the miraculous with your limited ability. Praise God. With your they said there's a problem that needs to be solved. The next thing is that my resources. And then the next thing is that my capability, my influence, my status, my earning. God is not interested in dealing with you on the basis of your earning. Praise God. Now, there's a different, you know, like three times said, there are two ends to the pendulum. When it comes to your earning, plan your living. You know, you know, some people take, when you say certain things, then they take you to the other end. Praise God. Now, when it comes, we don't deal with the earning. Praise God. <laughs> your family will suffer. <laughs> so you plan your earning. You pay your tithe and everything. Do your spending should be by planning. 
Praise God. But when it comes to solving problems, when it comes to approaching your future, that is not that your little hand. Praise God. You remove yourself from the equation. You get yourself out of the equation. The prospect and anticipation for the miraculous must not be evaluated with your limited ability. Praise God. You must learn to dig deep. We depend on God's ability. We depend on his word. We rely on his promises. It is what he says. It is his integrity. The focus must be in. And lastly, we need to give rap attention to the testimonies of biblical characters as well as contemporary evidence of notable miracles by God's power. We must give rap attention to the testimonies of biblical characters as well as the evidence of contemporary uh, 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 as well as the contemporary evidence, sorry, as well as the contemporary evidence of notable miracles. Contemporary evidence of notable miracles. Biblical characters. Some of those scriptures which I read, many other scriptures. The gospel is full of the miracles Jesus did. All those are meant to reinforce our faith. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20, the Bible says, Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall prosper. Believe is prophet, and you shall be established. Okay, is it the other way around? When you believe in the Lord your God, you will be established. When you believe as prophet, then you will prosper. Look through the scripture. Read about David and about Abraham. Read about Joshua who spoke to the sun and the moon. Read about David, how he defeated Goliath and he Told the jaw of a lion and bear. That's the power of God. Praise God. Let it resonate in your spirit. It reinforces something. And get exposed to contemporary. Read about A.A. Allen. Praise God. Read about men that walk in the miraculous. So when you are faced. You are pushed to the wall. You are faced with situations where you need God. And you know, in these last days, let me tell you one thing the devil is doing. He's taking, he's, he's taking away the realm of the spirit. That is blindfolding man. The church on the realm of the spirit. And just trying to bring us to the same level. Dust. Dust. A grand level. Then after that, he will now open up. He will change the battleground. In these last days, he's changing the battleground. We we'll turn everything to spiritual. Whether it's financial, you see the Bible play out. It's already happening. Praise God. I, I'm seeing one thing has become so real to me. You know, you know, this Donald Trump presidency has changed everything. It's made it so real to me. Now, don't you, you, the, you know, I, I, I was some of the things that's happening in America now is that the major voices of the liberals. They are saying that there's even no thing. If anybody put on the MAGA cap, that make America great again, they beat him up. There's even no, you know, say, even like Clinton said, that civility is, the time for civility is over. Eric Holder, Obama's, uh, 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 attorney general, he said that, she, uh, uh, wasn't he, uh, 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 um, Michelle Obama said, when they go low, we go high. Now, lie. praise God. The guy said that when we when they go low, we kick them. And they've been beating people. Anybody that comes and you are GOPs, even yesterday, restaurant. Another and a professor said that anybody that eats in any restaurant 
and he's declared himself a Republican, they should beat him up. Now, America is never known to be there. Some guy, they bond, they bond a guy, he puts sticker, you know, uh, of Donald Trump on his truck, and they bond it and wrote Trump on the trunk. Aggression. Civility is thrown. America was never known for that. And that nation is extremely divided. You know why? Donald Trump is not accepted to have won that election. They forgot the guy has been president for two years already. That he did not win that election. That's okay. We'll still finish four years. And you have no right to tell, to say abortion is wrong. And, and federal government will fund abortion. Yes. They may not provide tax for people to feed, but they must provide money for people to abort children. That's that, you know, that thinking, I don't get it. I, and you have no right to say gay is right. We have right to say you Christians are not right. But you have no right to talk. And if you talk, additional tax will come on your business. Literally. Now, everything that is in the Bible is playing out. You see, and so we're going to see this aspect. We're going to see lying wonders. And that's why we have to harm ourselves. The way we harm ourselves is that the spiritual must become more authentic to us and real. The supernatural must be our real life. It must be, it must be real, tangible to us. You know, somebody shared this at I will end with this. A friend of mine in the 90s, they, they moved to Ibadan because they were in Kano and their church, the church, they, they were, you know, they were young people. The church where, you know, from university, you know, and the university pastor started the church in town and where they, they just have revival and excitement and love and fellowship. And then trouble broke out. Of course, from time to time, every now and then, they have religious violence and canoe and the bond churches. Now, this time around, I think what triggered it was that Ryan Bonke was holding crusade all over the north. That God sent him to the northern Nigeria. And he did a crusade in a Kaduna where 800,000 people responded to altar call. He did in, you know, Ilori, different parts of the country. He now came to Kano. She said, you know, uh, there's a Susan that was uh, Riabonki's intercessory team head. She, she had been sent I had 40 days to the crusade. And they were pray, praying and fasting for 40 days. And every day, miracles was happening. Miracles. Miracles. Until the final day, the crusade day. The crusade day like this, the devil, the devil lost it. <laughs> there were protests all over before, you know, in killing. They were burning Christian homes. You know, many families go. You know, that, that's probably the one that the uh, family of, I don't know whether it's that particular one, of Moses, um, Victor Moses, Chelsea football player. You know, they burned up his parents' house, was a little kid, and, you know, his dad, mom, and all the siblings died. He just survived. And then, the, you, know, uh, 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 you know, one of the angels just quickly took him abroad you know, for asylum. You know, all those sort of things, of course, common in the northern Nigeria. Today, it's, uh, 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 it's ants men. So, that, that was what was happening. And this friend of mine uh, took a friend to uh, the crusade, the intercessory part of the crusade. And the friend that she'd been trying to witness Christ to gave her life to Christ. And they were excited. She was looking forward to the crusade. On the day of the crusade, they didn't know that the street had been completely taken over. And uh, they took the vehicle, the taxi. By the time they got to the airport road, that's where the crusade was meant to hold. They saw the old place. 
born in tires. They were born in human beings. They put human beings and set them on fire and burn them alive. Christians. So, they got caught up in that. So, the taxi man, they asked him to identify himself. He was a northerner and a northern Muslim. They will ask you a few questions to recite some things. So, once he was able to, they, they let him go. So, they dropped them. <laughs> so, the two of them, the first lady, the newly converted lady, they stabbed her. And they stabbed with poisonous stuff at the edge. You know, and she was bleeding. She assumed she bled to death. Then her own, they saw she was pregnant. She was heavily pregnant. So they just, one of them just, just said, she, she, she understood Awusa and said that they should go and slaughter her at the back. So they took her to the slaughter part. They saw human beings slaughtered. Slaughtered. But all of a sudden, a four-wheel drive, painted green, just drew zoom. And then the door was open. I said, Madam, up in. Then she didn't know where she took a dive <laughs> with the preg every pregnancy and dived inside the vehicle. And then she was in, she, she was in shock. She couldn't ask any question until the guy got to the front of her house and opened the door and for him to for her to come out. Now, but the only thing that I'll cut to her is that she has a younger brother that was a colonel in the military. So she felt that's my brother, that saint. Of course, how did the brother know exactly where she was and all that detail? So she came out and got came, walked straight to the house. Then she turned. She didn't see the vehicle again. Then, so, but one way or another, she was able to connect. The brother was able to reach there and transferred our whole family to the, to the barrack. At the barrack, he now said, you saint. Someone. He said, I've been looking for you. I didn't say anyone. I've been to your house again and again. That's why I took all the family. You didn't send the fellow that brought me from the slaughter. Where I didn't say anyone. I don't know about the slaughter. I know they were killing people. The brother did not send the person. She said when she turned back, she didn't see any vehicle. It was there she realized God sent an angel. And, and, and such a powerful testimony. God's so powerful. God could have sent that same angel to everybody. That nobody will be killed if God chooses. But uh, I don't know. When you get to heaven, you ask him. <laughs> he doesn't do that with everybody. But the only thing that shocked her was that by Sunday... In that episode, their own church wasn't burnt. No, their church was burnt. They met in somebody's house. They have lost many church members. But you know what was shocking? Many people have testimonies. Testimonies that is beyond human. So I can't remember most of what she was sharing, but at least one of the ones I could remember was an elderly woman that was thrown inside the well. Now, she wasn't the only one. The true children inside the well. And for whatever reason, the children were not saved. But this elderly woman said, as she was thrown inside the well, someone lifted her. Just used an, one hand like this. And lifted her. And in her, te her testimony was so funny. Because she was saying that, Sorry, oh. so your aunt is not paying you. you know, she, she was an illiterate. You know, she was saying it in Igbo language. Your aunt is not paying you. Sorry. <laughs> Won't you change to the other end? <laughs> An elder like that for a long time until when they came to rescue her. <laughs> Praise God. You know, that, of course, that's a situation exceptional. A situation of war. But the interesting thing is that even in that situation, extreme situation, God still shows up. Let me tell you one thing that's the will of God is that 
you should constantly um, what's the word? Um, you know, I don't want to use the word familiarize. We, we should constantly make bring clues, scriptures that assures up us of the promises of God, the love of God. God's presence with us. Those scriptures should be what weave your mindset, belief system, so that when you are pressed on every side, because tough will press us. Sometimes betrayal will press you. Sometimes something will attempt to assault you at one point or another. What should come out? Should be the power of God. Praise God. Should be the power of God. Whether it's danger, whether it's illness, whether anything that comes against us, what should flow out should be the power of God. Let's try to open up. I just want us to give thanks to God, reminding us one more time. That all power belongs to God. And that daily, he wants us to walk in the miraculous. And the demonstration of his power. Lord, we give thanks to you. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. Blessed be your name, our God. Blessed be your name. Honor, glory, dominion, and power belongs to you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, thank you for sending us your word again. Thank you for strengthening our faith. Thank you for speaking to our heart. And Lord, we just trust you that going forward, help us by the Spirit to constantly have our faith reinforced. Constantly. Faith for healing. Faith for the miraculous. Faith for the demonstration of your power. Faith for supernatural provision. Help us to constantly have our faith reinforced. Lord, to walk in the basics. The basics of redemption, redemptive reality. And to confront the kingdom of darkness and overcome them. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we want to be fulfilled in life. We don't want to live a life that, you know, as in like, it is as the life, you know, sort of uh, 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 measure it for us. That's not the life we want to live. We want to live a life of fulfillment. A life that is orchestrated by your power. A life that is driven by the kingdom of God. By the force of righteousness. That's the life we want to live. Lord, we worship you. And Lord, I lift up everyone who is paying their tithe today. Lord, I pray that you will send forth rain in due season. And bless your children. And increase and multiply them in every good work. In the name of Jesus. Lord, as we minister to you our offering, our seeds... Lord, we trust you that the God of harvest will multiply to us your provision. That every single one of us here will experience the power of divine multiplication. And the power of supernatural supply. That you will bless your children and increase them and multiply them. And that you will cause, you will make everybody here, Lord, their understanding to become a recipient and a dispenser of your power in the earth. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' name we pray.